lines are going to be delivering these tanks through Spain. So they're going to be coming from Poland um, in all of these different locations. What do you make of that side from the Russian side of this now? Well, first of all, you have to understand that the, um, the Ukrainian defense minister uh, last month just straight out said that Ukraine is a de facto member of NATO, uh, that the Ukrainian army is a proxy NATO force, uh, and that Ukraine's willing to sacrifice its blood, but it must receive the equipment from NATO in order to uh, carry out these tasks. So by his own definition, which then was, uh, you, you could say, well, that's just uh, an irresponsible, overenthusiastic Ukrainian official. Then you back it up with the meeting of the Ramstein contact group uh, on uh, January 20th, where all of the defense ministers of NATO and other nations who aren't NATO, like Sweden and Finland and such, uh, got together and without exception, articulated a similar um, you know, a, a theory of their involvement, that this is about a NATO war with Russia. The German uh, uh, foreign minister just stated, said it straight up right. to her European right. colleagues. Germany is at war with Russia. Um, let's, let's be clear. Russia has every legal right, every legal right to attack any place in Europe that is involved in the transfer of these weapons to Ukraine. By agreeing to transfer these weapons to Ukraine, every nation that has said, yes, this is what we're going to do, has become an active participant in the conflict. And under the laws of war, Russia can take them out. Now, here's the good news. Russia is simply putting a marker down <clears throat> and saying, you've, you've just increased our target deck. We can do this. But Russia has been managing escalation from the very beginning. And the last thing Russia wants is to turn this into a, a um, you know, not just a de facto, but a de jure of conflict between NATO and Russia, because now it's nuclear war and it's over. Um, so I don't see, in the, at least in this iteration, Russia uh, reaching out and touching Polish uh, logistics centers, uh, German railheads, uh, Spanish tunnels. I, I don't see that happening because Russia doesn't need to do that. Russia's winning this war, hands down. And Russia's going to win this war, hands down. But Russia is letting NATO know that if by some strange uh, you know, set of, 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 of occurrences, uh, all this equipment showed up in Ukraine, and Ukrainians were able to assemble a mailed fist that threatened Crimea or anything else, that it's game set over. I mean, it, Russia will open up and unleash everything they have on NATO because NATO is an active participant in this conflict. Um, and again, if you take a look at Russian nuclear doctrine, one of the, uh, the conditions for the use of nuclear weapons is if NATO or a NATO-like entity assembles sufficient conventional military power that threatens the existential survival of Russia. So what NATO is seeking to do, they're not going to accomplish it, but what they're seeking to do is give Ukraine the ability to act as a NATO proxy to threaten the existential survival of Russia, uh, which means Russia, if this actually occurred, would use nuclear weapons, not on Ukraine. They've said it straight up. This isn't going to be a tactical nuclear weapon against Ukraine. They're going to hit NATO. They're going to hit London. They're going to hit Berlin. They're going to hit Paris. They're going to hit Brussels. They're going to hit Madrid. They're going to hit Lisbon. Hey, Portugal, good job. You just made yourself a nuclear target. Um, th this is the reality. Now, the, again, the good news is Russia's winning this war, and they're going to win this war. Russia's ready for this. They're prepared for this. But politically, this is, um, this is an escalation. And imagine, put yourself in Russia's shoes. What NATO is saying is they want to kill Russians. They want to kill Russians. This isn't some mathematical game with tanks and steel and, and all this kind of stuff. It's not a computer game. This is reality. Now, I've said that what all they're doing is actually enabling Russia to slaughter more Ukrainians. That's the truth. But let's say that, you know, because war, the blade of war cuts both ways. That's just the harsh reality of it. That the same blade you'd use to kill somebody is cutting you. And let's say Russia gets away with a 10 to 1 casualty ratio. That's a fantastic ratio, almost impossible to achieve, but they're doing that now. But let's say the new tanks come in and Russia sustains this, and they kill 40,000 Ukrainian troops, which is what's going to happen. Russia's going to lose 4,000 dead. 
That's 4,000 mothers, 4,000 wives, 4,000 daughters, 4,000 sisters, 4,000 grandmothers and uncles and brothers and sons that are going to lose loved ones. This is unforgivable, literally unforgivable. And remember, this isn't a war that was provoked. It's not an unprovoked act of aggression by Russia. This is something that has been planned by NATO since 2008 when they invited Ukraine to join, something that has been perpetrated by NATO since 2014 when Angela Merkel and uh, Hollande, the, the French president, conspired with uh, Petro Poroshenko, the Ukrainian president, to use the Minsk Accords as a shield to buy time to build up this NATO proxy army for the purpose of killing Russians. This has been going on since the spring of two, uh, 2022. We now have the Ukrainian head of intelligence saying the peace agreement that Russia was sitting down in Istanbul to sign with Ukraine that Boris Johnson killed, it was a sham, too. It was never going to happen. It was designed to buy time to do what? To kill Russians. To kill Russians. That's right. all this is about. Right. And Lloyd Austin has admitted that when he came out in May of last year and he spoke in Warsaw and he said, we need to bring pain to Russia. Well, pain is a cute little word. It means death. It means dead Russians. Right. It means suffering and you know, for NATO, the United States, Germany, uh, Portugal, and all others to act on this desire um, can only generate hate on the part of the Russians. And Europe better pray that the Russians turn out to be a forgiving nation, because what Europe is doing right now is unforgivable. Yeah. Well said. Well said.